Hello everyone. Today we're playing a classic PC game, and one of my favorites, The Journeyman Project Turbo. Ah, love this logo. Nostalgia I'm feeling right now is superb. <laughs> All right, before we get started, let's go to this overview here. This is the Journeyman Online Help File. Roll over each part of the interface to learn more about it. This window displays the current date even after traveling through time. The digital compass displays your current heading. The energy level counter keeps you informed of how much time remains until it is necessary to leave a time zone. Never let this counter reach zero, as Pegasus will not have enough energy left to pull you back to the present. The biotech interface communicates to the player through this pop-out message screen. These are the inventory controls. Use the arrow buttons to scroll through the objects in your inventory. If you wish to use an object, just drag its PyCon from the inventory window to the object in the main view window that you intend to use it on. To use an item on yourself, just click its PyCon. If you need information about an object, scroll to that item and click the information button next to its name, or double click the name itself. This is the Recall button. Click this button to be pulled back to the present from another time zone. This is the Biochip Display Panel. Biochip functions are displayed and controlled through this slide-up screen. Click on these navigation buttons to step forward or backward, or to turn left or right. The Chip Bank is where biochips are stored. Biochips are microcomputer chip modules which provide instruction codes for a specific task. For example, the mapping biochip uses the display panel to graphically map where the agent has walked. To activate a biochip, open the chip bank and click on the desired chip. Use the interface biochip to save or recall a game in progress. This is the energy level warning light. It is there to warn you when your energy is getting low. To take an item which you see in the view window, just drag it down into your inventory. Okay, that about sums it up. I hope you understand how this game works now. <laughs> so let's... Click out of here. And without further ado, let's get started. The year is 2318. The location, the skyborne metropolis known as Kaldoria. The Earth is finally at peace after a long, bloody battle against a few tyrants who sought total world domination. Having learned the hard way the evils of imperialism, the borders began to come down one by one. 
Finally, in the year 2117, the unified world was realized. Now, all that we have accomplished is being threatened by the power of time travel. Realizing its potential for destruction, the very same Democrats who initiated the building of the time machine immediately discontinued the project once they saw a working prototype. Temporal travel now being a reality, they brought the time machine to a secret location and formed an agency to protect the flow of history. The project, codename Journeyman. story <laughs> would you like to live in a city like this me eh, I don't know It's a city in the sky. <laughs> oh, I always love the music of this game. This little space ambiance. It's always kind of relaxing. I think one day I'm going to record a, an album of space ambiance music like this. Possibly go rope. Ah! Perfect place to wake up. <laughs> Good morning. Once again, it's another beautiful day here in the peaceful, skyborn metropolis of Caldoria. And unless you've been trapped in some kind of time warp, you know that today marks the culmination of ten years of debate as all of Earth awaits the arrival of the alien delegate from the symbiotry of peaceful beings. Their goal? To welcome the entire human race into their interplanetary alliance of sentient beings. Our Megan Love is at the Capitol building right now with a live update. Megan? Megan, can you hear me? I'm right here. Thanks, Johnny. Ten years ago today, Earth was visited by a race of aliens who called themselves the Sorolans. They told us that they were here to invite us into an alliance, which they called the Symbiotry of Peaceful Beings. The purpose of this alliance, they said, is simply to share knowledge and culture with other alien races. They then left after saying they would give us exactly ten years to deliberate their proposal. Today is the day of their return. All along the streets of Caldoria and here in the Capitol building, it's amazing, Johnny, there are thousands of people gathered, hoping to catch a glimpse of the Sorolan delegate as the procession heads this way. We've heard various rumors that a fleet of ships have already been detected on long-range radar and should soon be arriving. And with each new rumor, the excitement here seems to grow tenfold. Back to you at the studio, Johnny. Thank you, Megan Love. This morning's broadcast was brought to you by Future Cola, the choice of a peaceful generation. I'm Johnny Ego, and you're listening to the mellow sounds of WKIM Do Big. <clears throat> okay, it begins now. I'm gonna need this. I 
and here's what it does. Now you can click on these buttons to move around, but you can also use the directional buttons on a keyboard to move around, which I think I'm going to be doing. You know, the graphics look primitive by today's standards, but I'm still blown away as I, as I was back when I was a kid, when I first played this. I really am. You know, used to playing Nintendo and Super Nintendo games, seeing something like this was incredible. Oh. Alright, right, let's go to the bathroom. <laughs> and even details like this, you know, seeing your character's reflection in a mirror from a first person's perspective. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Even through the door, you can still see the reflection. <laughs> now let's sit down here. I'd better not spend too much time there. <laughs> yeah, you can just get up and it just <laughs> stop in instantly. Uh, this message telling you you gotta go to work. Does anybody else feel thirsty looking at these walls? I swear, th this looks like the kind of design you'd see on a on any kind of styrofoam cup where you get you know drinks from you know, this little concession stands and like stadiums. I'm not home right now, Susie. If this is you, meet me down by the Capitol building. I got an absolutely torg spot to watch the procession. Come in! Psych! <laughs> gotcha, it's just a recording. Anyway, I uh, checked out this morning, uh, Caldori time about 6 o'clock, went for a White Sands jog in Tahiti. Be back in a while. I'm on vacation, I won't be back for... Two weeks, five days, six hours. Thank you. Mm. Roof A. 
access. Hmm? We'll be going up to the roof. Toy floor. <laughs> Listen to what happens when you select floors two and three. Access denied. This floor was never modeled or rendered. Access denied. This floor was never modeled or rendered. In other words, the developers never made those floors, so no go. But you can go to the roof. Roof access. Obviously the fourth floor and the first floor. We're sorry. The Caldoria Heights Rooftop Observatory is closed during the alien procession. They could have said that these floors were undergoing repairs or renovations, but, you know. Go for direct humor. <laughs> This unit is vacant. For more information, please refer to the Caldoria kiosk in the lobby. <laughs> this unit is vacant. For more information, please refer to the Caldoria kiosk in the lobby. This is the kiosk they're referring to. Welcome to Caldoria Heights Apartments, the best view of Caldoria. While here, please feel free to visit our rooftop observatory. Located directly across from the Capitol building in Sector 3, Caldoria Heights plays host to a number of luxurious accommodations. Our 15 units offer ample living space and the very best views of the city. Aluminized steel plumbing and titanium bathroom fixtures are standard. And topping off this list of distinctive features is a high-res 4D environ system built into each and every living room. Designed for metro properties by Marco Giappitti, Caldoria Heights offers comfortable accommodations in an attractive environment. <laughs> Look at that. You even see the character's reflection in the glass. I always love that little detail. <clears throat> All right. Global Transporter, Caldoria Heights Apartments, Sector 3. Searching for open transport route now. Route accessed. Upon entering, transport card will be required. Thank you for using Global Transport. Foreign organism detected in transport. Please hold for tracking and sterilization process. Foreign element eliminated. Jeez. You need to be a bug in this system. <laughs> Please insert your global transport card now. Uh-oh, late for work. <laughs> Choose a destination. As much as I like to go to these other places, I have to go here. Preparing <laughs> destination transporter. No, seriously, if you go any of those other places, you die. Recording passengers' organic substratum. Prepare for molecular disintegration. Completing molecular reintegration. Thank you for using global 
instruction manual of this game. And there we go. Verification of cranial contour scan. Central Cortex Scan. to the command center. scheduled. Activate upper left monitor. And another code I have to put in. Particle Accelerating Space-Time Transporter Version 1, otherwise known as Pegasus, was the brainchild of part-time historian, full-time physicist, Elliot Sinclair. In 2311, after seeing Sinclair's time-bending experiments, the government contracted him to build a full-scale operational time machine. The purpose of this device was to explore our past as well as to discover the truth behind many disputed historical events. Just four years after the project was begun, the world's first time machine underwent its first test run. However, due to mounting concerns by individuals who believed that the machine would be used not only to explore history, but also to alter it, the test run would be the first and last time that the machine would be used for research purposes. The project was discontinued, and Sinclair was forbidden to ever work on time distortion projects again. Time travel now being a reality, the government secretly set up the Temporal Security Annex as a means to safeguard history from sabotage. You, the members of the Temporal Protectorate, are among the very few who know of its existence. The simplest analogy for the theory of time travel is that of a tunnel in time. When someone travels through time, a tunnel is created which originates when travel is begun and ends when the traveler lands. If some event in the past is altered, theory states a rip occurs in the fabric of time, which gives rise to a temporal chain reaction. 
This chain reaction takes the form of a reality distortion wave and could take anywhere from a few seconds to several hours to reach the present. Of those who aren't uncreated when the distortion wave hits, many will suddenly have a new life and the past as we know it will cease to exist. Traveling back in time before the distortion wave hits, though, allows an agent to jump over the distortion wave and escape its effects. So as a member of the Temporal Protectorate, you alone will have the ability to jump back in time and prevent the corruption from ever happening. And to ensure that it doesn't happen again, you'll have to discover the source of this disruption and bring it to a halt. In the event that it becomes necessary to restore the proper course of history, the procedure is as follows. As quickly as possible, get to the ready room and use the biosupport suit generator. The biosupport suit is an indispensable element of the time travel process and is essential for your protection. Next, get your assigned mapping and Pegasus biochips and the journeyman key from the cabinet next to the biosuit generator. The Pegasus biochip is your link to Pegasus. It is what allows you to be pulled back to the present at the touch of a button. After you're outfitted for travel, but before the reality distortion wave reaches the present, you must jump to the year 200 million BC. Upon arriving there, use the journeyman key to open the storage vault and obtain the journeyman historical log. Since it exists at a point in time previous to any likely temporal changes, this disk serves as a source of unaltered historical information. To discover how history has been changed, head back to the temporal security annex and insert the journeyman disk into the computer. It will be cross-referenced with the historical log which was left behind to be altered by the reality distortion wave. Knowing how, when, and where the past was changed should give you the information you need to restore the proper flow of history. A word of caution, though. Time is very sensitive to change. In order to keep from altering history worse than it already has been, try to solve the problems you encounter without changing anything. As a rule, a temporal protectorate agent should never interfere with any events of the past. Never leave anything behind that came from a different time. Never remove any historically important objects from a time zone. And above all else, an agent should never interact with beings from another time zone. All right, you got all that? All right, review session's over. Uh-oh, what do we have here? Warning, warning, warning. Temporal writ detected. Oh. Alert status, Alpha. Temporal distortion imminent. Agent 5, proceed to ready room.
use that reflection again. If you look closely, you can see I'm wearing the bio support suit. <laughs> step further. Large carnivorous life forms detected. Oh boy. And I guess that's what they meant. Or maybe that.
insert log disk to initiate historical reconfiguration and comparison. Now I have to input the last code in the game. Alright, now let's go through each entry here. We're going to look at the unaltered version and the altered version. May 15, 2112. The government of Gorbistan appears ready to agree to the terms of the Worldwide Unification Treaty being set forth by the United Nations. However, at least one terrorist faction disagrees with the terms of the plan and has expressed this disagreement by taking hostages, many of which are American. Nevertheless, it appears that the Worldwide Unification Treaty will be signed by Gorbistan and all other nations of the world. Five fifteen twenty one twelve fourteen hundred hours. Amid negotiations to work out the final details of the Worldwide Unification Treaty, a nuclear missile was launched today by the United States toward the country of Gorbistan. The missile, however, self-destructed before actually touching down. Before the scare, the leaders of this country appeared ready to accept the terms of the peace plan. Certain terrorist factions, on the other hand, express their disapproval by taking hostages, some American. Although U.S. government officials have repeatedly stated that they do not understand how the missile could have been launched, other foreign governments have already said that they cannot possibly sign a treaty with a country that would use such scare tactics. Thus, the Worldwide Unification Treaty, which has come so close to realization, now has little or no chance for success. August 3rd, 2185. Early today, the pilot of a cargo shuttle approaching the Morimoto Mars colony spotted an unidentified spacecraft hovering over the colony. The sighting was verified by landing bay scanners and immediately reported to Earth. Soon after, the ship sped off toward the outer reaches of the solar system. H3-2185, 0800 hours. Morimoto Corporation's Mars Colony project suddenly went offline last night, just moments after a reported sighting of an alien spacecraft. While it is still unclear what has happened, debris has been spotted by long-range scanners, leading many to believe that the colony was destroyed by a malevolent alien race. Repeated efforts to contact the colony have met with no success. If the colony was destroyed, it is likely that all members of the 30-person crew appointed to oversee the construction robots have also perished. January 17, 2310. A rally was held today at the World Science Center to discuss whether or not we are ready for interaction with alien races. One speaker, Dr. Enrique Castillo, delivered a particularly moving speech. Dr. Castillo embarrassed the naysayers by systematically shooting down their arguments and thrilled the audience with visions of medical and technological advances which could be gained by such interaction. Although there were strong keynote speeches on both sides of the argument, most of the crowd appeared to be in favor of alien contact.
1 17 23 10, 1700 hours. A bizarre accident during a rally to deliberate the pros and cons of alien contact left a man dead earlier today. Dr. Enrique Castillo was pronounced dead on arrival at the Sydney Medical Complex after a freak accident on stage at the World Science Center. Dr. Castillo was one of the few at the rally who still believed that contact with an alien race would be beneficial to humanity. Although his views were not mainstream, Dr. Castillo's contributions to the pro-alien movement will be greatly missed. November 6, 2308. More than a century after the first recorded sighting of a UFO, aliens have finally made contact with us. Early this morning, a huge triangular-shaped vehicle entered into Earth's orbit. After three hours, the spacecraft came through the atmosphere and hovered over Caldoria. Moments later, the following message was transmitted over all communications frequencies. We are the Solans. Please do not be alarmed. We have come because we feel that you are ready. You have reached the point where you are no longer dangerous to yourselves or others. This is why we have chosen to invite you to join us in the symbiotry of peaceful beings. An alliance of sentient beings whose objective is to benefit from the sharing of knowledge and culture. We know that it will take some time to fully comprehend the nature of this encounter. So we will give you the opportunity to deliberate our proposal. On this same day, ten years from now, us, Roland Delegate, will visit you to extend a formal invitation to join the symbiotry. Until then, we look forward to meeting you in person. And as suddenly as they had appeared, the Sirolans departed. Eleven six twenty three oh eight twenty three hundred hours. Today, one hundred twenty three years after the first official UFO encounter, an alien spacecraft entered Earth's orbit. After several hours of silence and mounting tension, the aliens transmitted the following message over all communications frequencies. We will return when you are ready. While no one is quite sure what this message means, many people have voiced concern about interacting with a potentially dangerous alien race. Okay, that's all the information we have. Now if you look closely, the game actually does give you a hint, a hint as to which time zone you should go to first. Chance of success. You know, look at the percentages there. Okay, time to get to work. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
select a destination from the listing on the left monitor. Okay, here we are. Shadow lock active. Launch not authorized. Can't go through there because there's people there. Welcome to Crusade Planitia, more commonly known as Mars. Like a heavenly siren, Mars lures us to its inhospitable shores with visions of unearthly splendor. The atmosphere of this planet which is composed mainly of carbon dioxide, is only one one hundredth as dense as that of Earth. However, thanks to an atmospheric energy shield, you can enjoy the majesty of the immense volcano Olympus Mons, the vast canyons known as Copertes and Copertes Minor, and many of Mars' other natural wonders from within the comfort of Morimoto Corporation's Mars colony. The generator for the colony's atmospheric shield lies far beneath the planet's surface, the legacy of the miners whose abandoned caverns this colony is built over. Construction of the colony should be completed by June of 2190. Please enjoy your stay. The Morimoto Mars colony occupies two square miles of space on the edge of the canyon known as Copertes Minor. The walls of this canyon host the shuttle docking bay, as well as the gantry from which the shuttles are launched, and the accelerator tube which shoots them out into space. A closer look at the gantry reveals its 140 foot stretch across the canyon, and the three cockpit module nose which transport pilots to and from the ships. You are currently in the entry hall of the shuttle port. The red areas at the top and bottom of the map indicate remnants of the old mining colony which have not yet been renovated. These areas are for authorized personnel only. The path at the left center of the map is the main entrance to the colony. Alright, get some information about this place. Transport ready. Gonna need that and this.
Now, does this view look familiar? Well, let me tell you. This is the online journeyman help file. Roll over each object in the in the course. Bleh, excuse me. <laughs> Something in my teeth. Roll over each icon in the view window to learn more about it. First, we gotta go through here. We better have that ready. Seriously, you die if you do that. Analyze. Explosive device detected in card slot. To deactivate the explosive device, complete the electrosynaptic connections by filling them in with the appropriate color nodes. Now access level one. Color node. Node 1, yellow. Node 2, red. Node 3, green. One node, correct. Gotta make sure you put it, put it in the right sequence. And you see we have a time limit here. Now if that runs out, the radiation dissolves me. Node 1, green. Node 2, red. Node 3, yellow. Zero nodes, correct. Node 1, yellow. Node 2, green. Node 3, red. Zero nodes, correct. Node 1, red. Node 2, yellow. Node 3, green. Three nodes, correct. All right. You have completed level 1. Now access level 2. Choose a color node. Node 1, yellow. Node 2, red. Node 3, blue. Zero nodes, correct. Node 1, blue. Node 2, green. Node 3, red. One node, correct. Node 1, blue. Node 2, yellow. Node 3, green. Zero nodes, correct. Node 1, red. Node 2, green. Node 3, yellow. Three nodes, correct. You have completed level 2. Now access level 3. Choose a color node. Node 1, green. Node 2, purple. Node 3, blue. Zero nodes, correct. Node 1, purple. Node 2, yellow. Node 3, red. Zero nodes, correct. Node 1, blue. Node 2, green. Node 3, purple. Three nodes, correct. You have completed level 3. The explosive device has been disarmed. You may now remove the explosive device manually. Okay.
Maintenance transport disabled. Oh boy. That's only one way back up. Warning. Life support systems not active beyond this point. Good thing I have this. Good thing I have a mapping biochip. That's where we started. Now you have to be quick here. See? As soon as you see that door, you gotta press forward. Otherwise, you die. Shuttle 2 has just departed from East Gantry. No shuttle present at this dock. Emergency shuttle lock override. Launch of Shuttle 2, over. I copy that. Launch of Shuttle 2 confirmed. What is Shuttle 2's current location, over? Shuttle 2 appears to be headed towards the launch tube. Hang on a sec. We have an unauthorized breach of security at Shuttle 3, over. Current location? Shuttle 3 is still at bay in East Gantry, over. Roger. Sending security force to East Gantry. Requesting manual override on launch sequence for Shuttle 3, over. That's a negative. 
The whole security grid on the east gantry seems to be down. Please secure all loose objects. Prepare for drop launch. Man, I love the soundtrack of this game. Propulsor waves. Stand by for atmospheric breakaway. The Graviton Cannon is a highly destructive combat weapon. The energy damping beam will safely drain a targeted ship of energy for tracking purposes. The tractor beam can only hold a targeted ship whose energy level has been drained below 10%. Attention Tower, Shuttles 2 and 3 have both armed their weapon systems. It looks like the lead shuttle has locked its graviton cannon on the alien spacecraft. Estimated time till intercept, five minutes. Energy charge level too low. Energy charge level too low. The tractor beam can only hold a targeted ship whose energy level has been drained below 10%. Field range limited to center of screen. Tractor 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 field range limited to center of screen. Right. Yeah. Pre transportation scan reveals damage to targeted ship. In its attempt to break free from tractor field, all onboard electrical systems were overloaded. Verifying coordinates. Scanning destination area. Destination safe for transport. The alien ship must be destroyed. Central processor damaged. Self-destruct sequence initiated. 
Okay, let's get some chips here. All right. Temple rip has been resolved in this time zone. Look at this first. Ares, I'm sending you to Earth's colony on Mars in the year 2185. There you must accomplish two events simultaneously. First, you will plant the delayed action explosive device I've given you in such a way that you will wipe out the entire colony by blowing up their atmospheric shield generator. But before the bomb detonates, you must hijack an armed escort shuttle and destroy the alien who was reported in that vicinity at that exact time. The result of this plan is two-edged. <laughs> Earth will think that the aliens wiped out their colony. The aliens will think that Earth destroyed their ship. What better plan could I have to keep everyone reminded of who the real enemy is and where the real danger lies. Take a look at what this is. information from compound analyzer. Diamond hydronate is a relaxant commonly found in sleep and health aids. In combination with other drugs, its effects can be overpowering. For this reason, it is used as a base for many different forms of tranquilizers. Three thorazine-based molecules have been pre-programmed. These molecules are stable. Base molecule number one. Alright, I have to do a little puzzle here. Base molecule number two.
Face molecule number three. Three staple thorazine base molecules have been designed. Building base molecules. Bonding additional molecules. Synthesis complete. The synthesized compound will appear in the molecular synthesizer. Alright. Take the antidote. Looks familiar. Let's look around here. Biotech implant. Hmm. That's this thing that I'm wearing right here. It is now 23 days after the implant of the biotech interface into the rat's cerebral cortex. Hmm. Mm, this is good. There's less infection than even Dr. Sinclair had anticipated. Uh, there are no signs. Okay. I had an interesting thought today while working on the contact-sensitive smart alloy. This guy concept. looks familiar. It's given that all elements behave in a manner that is consistent with their atomic properties. For example, it is consistent for manganese to bond with barium cobalt in a very particular way under certain conditions. In a sense, these universal instruction sets are similar to the DNA which regulates the behavior of all cells in biological organisms. This being the case, it's conceivable that any non-organic matter can be programmed to respond at the molecular level to a set of predetermined instructions and instruction codes. So imagine a lamp which upon command could take the form of a chair, a table, or even a work of art. The possibilities are infinite. I'm confident that a proposal to do further research in this direction will be met with approval. This month has been fraught with discoveries about the morphing process. We learned how to morph all of the elements, but only after we realized that a certain few of them are immutable. Specifically, the inert gases like argon and krypton, well, because of their unique electrochemical properties, they simply are immutable. Even worse, these elements actually interfere with the bonding of surrounding molecules and bring the whole process to a halt. On the plus side, we have also discovered that if proper care is taken, even organic matter could foreseeably be altered in form. This journal is, beyond a doubt, the most important of my career, as today marks my first success in the application of time distortion theory by creating a localized neutrino acceleration matrix I was able to bend time for just a fraction of a second. Anything entering into the distortion field slipped back in time for just a moment creating a visual effect similar to light refraction in water in a swimming pool. It may, it may not seem like much, but it's truly more than any physicist could hope to achieve in a lifetime. And while it may be eons before there's any practical application of this theory, everything great was achieved one small step at a time, and this is definitely the first step. Dr. Harry Sinclair for your views. You will 
Take a short break now and return to hear from the distinguished Dr. Enrique Castillo. Thank you, gentlemen, for your attention. All right. Don't want to go that way. Processor damaged. Self-destruct sequence initiated. Mercury, I'm sending you to eliminate my adversary, Enrique Castillo, who thought he was doing the world such a favor, convincing them that I was insane to fear alien contact. Well, I'm not the one. I'm not the one who's inviting death into my home. The only place I can be sure of finding him is on stage at the alien contact rally eight years ago, so I'm sending you to the World Science Center in the year 2310. Try to make his death look accidental, but whether or not you succeed at that, do everything you have to, to ensure his demise. The same Elliot Sinclair. I'll need this from when we jump here. Whatever you 
do throughout this time zone do not take off that mask. Oh, and don't ever touch that. Warning, all personnel, contamination detected in or at air ducts and ventilation systems. Warning, all personnel, contamination detected in or at air ducts and ventilation systems. Warning, all personnel, contamination detected in or at air ducts and then warning. All personnel, contamination detected in the ventilation systems. Plasma building? Better use this. Station 1, improper access credentials. Nuclear strike launch code denied. Warning, warning. Manual override terminal currently unmanned in Alpha Station 2. Unequal pressure between this chamber and subduct. Equalize pressure before entering. Avoid maximum pressure. Some objects may implode. Scan, we're gonna need this biochip. Please hold for 10 seconds for Alpha Sector Retinal ID scan. Authorized. Red alert. 
Nuclear safe Primary target, Gorbastan. Launch, launch silo selected, Honolulu, Hawaii. Launch to proceed in two minutes. To deactivate a missile before launch, use the trackball to move the cursor over the active silo, then touch the override button. Like so. Silo deactivated. <laughs> New launch silo selected. Dublin, Ireland. Launch to proceed in one minute. Fifty seconds. Red alert. Red, Red alert. Red alert. Nuclear safeguards disabled. Missile launch imminent. Abort launch sequence from manual override terminal only. Red alert. Red there we go. Silo deactivated. New launch silo selected. Addis Adeba, Ethiopia. Launch to proceed in one minute. Forty seconds. You cannot possibly win. Watch me. Silo deactivated. New launch silo selected. San Antonio, Texas. Launch to proceed in one minute. Thirty seconds. Red alert. Silo deactivated. New launch silo selected. Bangkok, Thailand. Launch to proceed in one minute. Twenty seconds. <laughs> you will fail. Silo deactivated. New launch silo selected. Bond, Germany. Launch to proceed in one minute. Ten seconds. Silo deactivated. New launch silo selected. Seoul, Korea. Launch to proceed in one minute. Give up, human, or I will be forced to eliminate. Silo deactivated. New launch silo selected. Reykjavik. Iceland. Launch to proceed in 50 seconds. Red alert. Red alert. Nuclear safeguards disabled. Missile launch imminent. Abort launch sequence from manual override terminal only. Red alert. Red alert. Hmm. Nuclear safeguards disabled. Missile launch imminent. Silo deactivated. New launch silo selected. Svortosk, Siberia. Launch to proceed in 40 seconds. You are running out of time. Silo deactivated. New launch silo selected. Madrid, Spain. Launch to proceed in 30 seconds. Silo deactivated. Maximum deactivation allotment exceeded. Global launch override safety feature engaged. All silos deactivated. <sighs> the only good human is a dead human. Whew. Well, that's over and done with. Processor damaged. Self-destruct sequence initiated. And 
this is the only chip I need. Poseidon, I am sending you to the deep sea installation NORAD 6 in the year 2112, where you will disrupt the world unity talks by launching a nuclear missile towards Gorbistan. You will detonate the warhead before it touches down. That should suffice to delay world unification. I can only pray that it will not also touch off a nuclear holocaust. I, I, I wish, I wish it had not come to this. But until now, it has been entirely out of my control. If the bureaucrats who scrapped the Pegasus project had instead used it in the way it was meant to be used, they would have realized that aggressors always choose the most unsuspecting victim. The Indians, the Africans, the Jews, the Swedes were all lulled into a sense of complacency before they were overpowered by their, by their conquerors. Our, 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 our alien friends tell us that they come in the name of peace, a tactic used by all the worst offenders throughout history. And so I am left to do what I can, what I can to ensure that Humanity itself is not the next victim. I'm sending you all back in history to rewrite our future. To rewrite, to write us a new future in which we will not offer these creatures an engraved invitation to enslave us all. And if you fail, I will be forced myself to demonstrate personally that we are not all as docile as we might seem. I know the one place in all of Sector 3 with the best view of the Capitol building. And from that place, by, by the use of a weapon of my own devising, I will assassinate the Cyril and Delegate myself. And if, God forbid, I should fail, one touch of the button and my remote detonator will be enough to end it all. Obliterating Caldoria and this foul infestation along with it. Best view of the Capitol building. Think I know where that is. Thank you.
possessed. Upon entering, transport card will be required. Thank you for using Global Transport. Please insert your Global Transport card now. Choose a destination. Preparing destination transporter. Recording passengers organic substratum. Prepare for molecular disintegration. Completing molecular reintegration. Thank you for using Global Transport. Sorry, the Caldoria Heights Rooftop Observatory is closed during the alien procession. I know a way around that. Cart bomb activated. Get back! Don't try to stop me! This will end it one way or another! Get back! Told you I was going to need that. And that's it. <laughs> the game is over. Roll credits. Should be credits playing here, but the, this version isn't really displaying them right now.
All right, here's the real credits. As people worked on the game, and actually, they did some voices for the game. And that's it. That's the Journeyman Project. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.